All right. And Jenny, you're recording too? I'm just one second. Okay. We're going. All right. Hello and welcome again, or welcome for the first time to the Creative Nectar podcast. I am your host, Stephanie Gray. Hey, everyone. I'm Jenny Hahn. And we're so glad you're here. And we're so glad to be here with you. Um, today, we're going to speak about or be talking about in conversation when authentic truths collide and how you can meet the discomfort of that with creativity, among other things, but creativity, because that's what we know. It yeah. became, last time we, uh, Jenny and I were together, it became clear for us, at least, that we needed to chat about what it's authentic truths and how all of us can have our own truth. And it's authentic for us. It's we're, you know, speaking from the from the heart, generally speaking, or we're speaking with conviction. This is our belief and we know this to be true. And Lately, it seems, at least here in the United States, probably more places, that it's harder and harder to have a place to go where it feels okay to express that and not be met with difficulty, cancellation, the whole thing. Am I explaining this well? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, keep going. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. Yeah. I, um... I just, we were both talking about how in our own lives, this has come up a few times. And I personally feel like we're at a point where if we can get this shifted a little bit, if we can teach ourselves how to communicate more from the heart, then things could really change. Things could really change in this, you know, in this country, in the West wherever we need it to change. Yes, yes. And I, we use in here, we talk a lot about process art, using art for our own self-discovery, for awareness, for awakening. And, and, and it can help, as you said, Steph, it helps us to drop into our heart, to learn more about ourselves, to um, experience what we're experiencing to work through emotions, you know, in so many ways, it's like, we call it like a moving meditation. And so I guess for me, I guess this conversation will also center around when, when everyone is discovering their authentic truth, can we also open the heart enough to hold space for everyone's authentic truth? <laughs> so, so staying open with curiosity, rather than shifting into self-righteousness or kind of solidifying around a truth, I'm putting truth in quotations in air quotes here, um, without solidifying around a belief system or, um, uh, yeah, I, I just keep going to the word like righteousness, but can, I, 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 it seems that art like, art throughout time, art making, art, art, literature, film, everything like that is also a, a conduit for learning about other people's experiences for, I mean, if you think about it, like your favorite film or your favorite Netflix series or favorite novel, anything, that's how we get a glimpse into somebody else's world. And so so on the flip side of that, you know, art also helps us to understand each other. So it helps us understand ourselves and each other. And then can we hold space for all of it to be true? Right. And it, I, I believe it also helps us cultivate that sense of who we truly are, right? And in the self-discovery and everything that creativity can bring. And that way, when you are out in the world and you're having difficult, uncomfortable conversations, you don't necessarily get lost in the swamp of it. And, and you can mm. feel like, okay, I'm here and I'm just in my heart and I'm here present in that curiosity that you were talking about. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned something the other day when we were kind of talking about this idea. You mentioned the language of the heart. And I, I loved that phrase because it's like, can we show up in conversations with people, with people maybe that don't agree with us, and still come from that heart space? And I think that is what um, what creativity allows us to drop into and yeah, to, to move from, to express from. So, yeah, I yeah. completely agree with that. And I also feel like creativity creativity can help us to, it helps soften the situation, like many situations. So we can use creativity to say you've had the conversation and then you come home or you're in your car or wherever you are and have access to being able to drop into that space even more and, and do some literal creation about the experience. Like maybe it was mm. really tough. Maybe you felt sad. Maybe you need to like cry on the page or whatever, um, or scream on the page. Like we talked about the, the last pod, you know, Our it's last just, show. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. so it meets us wherever we are. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, we always talk about it's that, like that soft space to land, uh, the soft place to land. Um, letting those emotions out. And yeah, for anyone who didn't catch our last episode, I highly recommend, especially dealing with it when anger or, or rage is mm -hmm. triggered. Um, yeah, ways to work with that without causing additional harm, without projecting it or dumping it onto someone else. And, and yeah, creative expression, the journal, the page um, allows us to let all that out let it all out in constructive ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and this is, at least for me, on my path, as I've learned to speak more of my truth in conversation. So because maybe I should step back for a minute, because I haven't always been able to even have these conversations, because I have felt so uncomfortable. And from early on, I've been a people pleaser, and I haven't wanted to have the feeling of discomfort. I just have wanted to go, go along with whatever the other person was saying until I could get out of there. And then I would be like welling it all up. So mm. the conversations, when you realize you can no longer work in that way, at least for me, it became messy like for a while. And there's still messiness to it. We are not taught to converse in this way we're not taught to communicate this way right from the heart we're taught to be to either mask and pretend like we agree or to war like there's doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of in between right right and a lot of that is conditioning of how we're supposed to feel how we're supposed to believe so so what 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 would you do with that stuff like when that ex experience would happen where you would when so when you would get out of the situation finally and then and then what well when i was very unconscious to it i don't know i would just i would probably unconsciously mm -hmm. go home and eat or have a stomach mm -hmm. ache or you know all of the unconscious stuff when i realized that i was doing it but then chose not to do anything about it then i would probably come home and still eat only more consciously <laughs> whatever I needed to do. But then as art and creativity came into the works, I I'm able to scribble it out. I was able to scribble it out, feel it in my body um, mm. and write down what I could not say. Mm. And now practicing yeah. having the tough conversations or just staying present and being curious and noticing what's arising. And sometimes, I mean, I feel blessed to have friends that if there is a conversation happening and it's feeling uncomfortable, I can just say, this is feeling uncomfortable for me, or this is feeling vulnerable for me. And I think it's important to have those safe spaces with friends in community. Um, and so now it's different, yes. you know, and permission to get messy. I, one of the first conversations mm. I had with someone about not feeling so great. And like, we both had our own, truths 
with the situation and speaking my truth and then realizing two days later that was messy and I feel like I need to apologize then I did Mm. I was able to call and apologize to this person Mm. so I mean it's like just be gentle yeah Yeah. Yeah. Allowing the messiness to be there. I mean, it's going to be there. And sometimes when we are speaking our truth with someone and we're not used to that, we can, we can, we can be shaking. We can, you know, our voice can crack. We can, we can go into sort of a panic of what's going to happen if I let this part of me out or, um, it can be very vulnerable, as you said. So letting that messiness be there, I think is, is perfectly fine you know that's art is messy too i mean obviously it's physically messy but like the process of creation is messy the process of birth is messy and can we allow that messiness to be in our authentic relating and communicating with one another and let that be okay not have to have our words polished or anything like that before we show up as ourselves and and hold space for each other to show up as their true self yet another way process art has can has helped me and can help do that you know being okay with the mess Mm -hmm. and and showing up authentically being curious not knowing how it's going to end up having it look a mess and being okay yeah 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 Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many ways that being in process art community with you and with others has been like this training ground for holding space for one another. I mean, it's, it's amazing when everyone is doing their inner work visually out in front of them and we get to witness, we get to peer into these windows of these worlds that are not ours, but that we can really feel into. It's so powerful. And you mentioned earlier about like turning toward hate and things like that in the world. And and I, I had to write down this one quote that my friend Shannon used to say, um, that's from Margaret, uh, Margaret Wheatley from her book, Turning to One Another, Simple Conversations to Restore Hope to the Future. She says, you can't hate someone whose story you know. Mm. And that's just so powerful because again, that's what creativity, that's what art, that's what all the arts um, can do is to help us peer into the, the window of someone else's soul and and how can we how can we have hate when we know somebody when we know their truth and maybe they can't speak it yet but maybe they can paint it maybe they can scribble it maybe um they can give us glimpses through song through whatever their creative form of expression is i i i really feel that um art art making in the in the broadest term in process art and all kinds of art is that great alchemizing force that can bring connection that can bring true peace not the surface peace of we're all going to accept everything as it is and we're going to accept what we're told but a true peace that comes from i'm okay with me and i'm okay with you and tell me about you and i'll tell you about me and let's hold space together with care with with compassion let's meet each other yeah let's Let's meet meet each other yes let's meet each other yes yes it's that curiosity you know when kids like on the playground meet i don't know if kids still go to playgrounds (laughs) everybody's on their on their (laughs) video games now no but kids on playgrounds you know it's like they'll go up and they get curious about each other you know they're like oh look at you, you're different from me, or, oh, tell me about you, you know, they play together, and they're, they're so curious, and we, we talk about this a lot um, in here, about the power of curiosity, and really wanting to explore, wanting to get to know, usually we're talking about exploring ourselves, but in this context, I think exploring one another, getting curious about one another. Yeah, what's your human experience been like? I'd really like to know, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> How's because, this human thing going for yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> isn't it kind of 
kind of weird right now or whatever, you know? And that is one thing I have learned is meeting people from that human place. You know, most everyone wants good health. They want to be close to family or loved ones. They want to feel safe. And so even if it's completely opposing belief systems, you know, coming together in in the same room, there is that heart-based, generally speaking, place of, of um, camaraderie, like, like there are similarities mm-hmm. there, even if it's coming from polar opposites. Right, right. It's distilling down to that essence, because like you said, you just said it, Steph, we all, when you really get down to the heart of it, most of us humans want very similar things but but we live in a in in a world of multiplicity of diversity it's going to express it's going to show up in so many different ways in so many different customs and cultures and beliefs and but can we get to the heart of it of what makes us human of what we truly desire and honor that in one another without getting caught up in the surface level differences yeah and and without the othering without the othering of the othering i love that it's like if i came up to you and just said i mean it might be kind of weird to come up to a stranger and just be like tell me about your loss you know <laughs> like that might be a little weird but at the same time like that is a common mm-hmm. ground that we we all know what it's like to love and and then lose i'm i mean yes. the majority of us do Yes, yes. That's beautiful. I mean, that makes me think of a poem, you know, tell me about your lot. I don't know. I'm thinking of Mary Oliver right now, but maybe there's not. I don't know if she has a poem. <laughs> maybe we're, we're making one up on the spot. We might be making one up. <laughs> no, but that's beautiful. I mean, that's really, I really think these healing conversations and healing connections is what is needed so dearly right now, so desperately. And, and to get to ask those questions rather than armoring up, uh, fighting for our stance, fighting for our own well-being and recognizing, oh, that person wants their well-being also. They want the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree. I feel like the change... I mean, we're witnessing change now. You can feel it. There's there's a transformation occurring. And and I feel like creating and and talking and communicating in a different way from the heart is gonna help that change transpire. I, I just mm-hmm. you know, I as we talk about process art, I'm also aware that I've been to several authentic relating, um, like game nights and authentic relating meetups and stuff with my friend, Tim, who also our Mm, friend, Tim, who, who made the, the song for us, the, the theme song for, for this podcast, but yes, it is that way. Yes. Thank you, Tim. It is that (laughs) way of communicating authentically and, and getting a little vulnerable and how I feel like that's necessary and that can actually become a power, right? That's like a superpower is to be vulnerable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so that's, finding, oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. And so finding these different ways to communicate, the authentic relating, the nonviolent communication, which we mentioned in the last conversation we had together, and we're going to link some links this time. Um I, I feel like it's important and, and to be in community where, where safe spaces or safer spaces are held, even our own online community. So yeah, there's, yes. you know, looking, looking for that change and being part of it. Yes. Creating it for ourselves and creating it in the world. Yes. Yes, yes. And yes. <laughs> well, along those lines, do you want to, maybe it's time we could talk about some practices some prompts and practices for, yeah, like how do we bring this change into the into the world and into our own lives? And how can we actually show up uh, when it is uncomfortable, when, um, yeah, when we would just want to run away? 
So do you have some, do you have some writing prompts or anything else you want to share around practices of yeah. how to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would say that um, I have found for myself setting an intention before going into conversation with a group um, mm -hmm. or with a person I know, you know, holds different beliefs or what, it, if it can get, if I know it's going to, could possibly get spicy, like I'm going to, I set the intention of moving from the heart that I, you know, that I find curiosity in the space and in creating, you know, realizing, oh, okay, I can, there are some things I can do to help create a safer space before I even, you know, go into the situation. And then, mm -hmm. you know, respect, realizing it can get messy and that's okay. And then, um, trying to remain fluid and compassionate as much as possible. Um, mm, yes. yes. But along the lines of creativity, I do have a couple of creative prompts if we're ready to do Great. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready if you, if you are, yeah. unless you have something else you want to share. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the writing prompt, I have two. The first one is, what do I do when I feel uncomfortable? Um, that's that's a good one. And then mm. locating, if you have the space to do it, locating in your body the discomfort and then just being with that and then asking if my discomfort could speak, what would it say? And then writing from that place. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank I, you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I do, I do want to hear what you brought to the table as far as the exercise goes. Yeah, what I brought actually piggybacks on what you just shared, because what I brought was I, I was really giving thought to this. And what kept coming to my mind was the way we have closed out process art sessions with a sharing circle with specifically with the silent witnessing that um, I think Sarah, our teacher, Sarah Oblinger, kind of came up with that phrase, right? If I'm not mistaken. I think so. If uh, not Sarah, if it was Stuart, yeah. Yeah, I think she, cause she used to uh, say like, um, silently witnessing one another through the eyes of the heart, um, something about that phrase. So, so my suggestion or my, creative expression activity is actually to ho hold a circle, host a circle. Um, this can be as simple as bringing some friends together, but ideally bringing together people that you have differences with, maybe somebody that you got into an argument with or that you just can't seem to agree on a world situation with or whatever it is. And to do some of these practices together. So you could do the writing prompts that you just shared, Steph, about, um, you know, where do I feel discomfort in my body? Or what was the first one again? The uh, What do I do when I feel uncomfortable? What do I do when I feel uncomfortable? Could be the prompts or it could be something else, but to create together either doing a, a drawing or sketch or scribble or writing everyone writing their own truth and then sharing it with one another and to share in a safe sacred space like we like to create here where what that means is we witness one another without needing to fix one another mm. without needing to offer feedback or critique of one another it's silent witnessing means to hold the space with an open mind and an open heart and to again with curiosity to just receive receive the other person's truth and to be held in that space we get to be received in our full truth it's a really beautiful powerful thing so feel free to modify this in whatever way but if that sparks any ideas for you of how to bring a few people together and hold space for one another in that way, then, then run with it. <laughs> oh, that would be incredible. And if you yeah. do, please share that with us. Yes. <laughs> we would love to hear <laughs> about it. 
share it with us. <laughs> and little plug for our community here. If you are looking for that kind of support and being witnessed and witnessing one, one another, we of course do that in our soul nectar community, especially in our once a month Friday live uh, groups, live gatherings, which if you are, well, let's see, this will probably air after our next one, but I'll cut that out. So that's a perfect uh, place to practice that, to practice silent witnessing, to practice holding space for one another with curiosity and compassion. Yeah, it's, it's really one of the, one of the things I've taken from process art is that sharing circle, creating that sacred space, um, the safer space and brought that, I feel like that's been brought out into the world more and more just because I've been practicing it for so long. And I'm so grateful. Mm. And that makes sense because it all starts from within, doesn't it? When we do our own inner work, our own shadow work, our own uncovering and and we practice and we work with peace in ourselves i mean that does start to affect our families our social circles our greater communities i mean this is how change really happens is <laughs> from the inside out <laughs> that is i really yeah. realized the other day it's like that's really be the change right is it is is being <laughs> being <laughs> being is be the change i mean it's <laughs> How can it be so simple <laughs> right. and yet so difficult? And so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, as always, uh, Jenny, this has been an amazing conversation and one I'm glad we were able to have. I feel like it's just so important um, to talk about this and to to give opportunity for safe space. And if anyone is feeling the urge to share with us just by sending us an email coming over to our instagram page or joining us in our soul nectar community we would so love to have you and share that yes. space with you yes absolutely please reach out to us yeah yeah all right well having said all, all that right. i think we're done with the with this episode and thank you so much for being with us again today Yes. Thank you all. And until next time, be well. We'll see you soon. Thanks.